Once considered the most influential figure in the known world, Marcus Aurelius embarked on a noble quest to lead a virtuous life in accordance with Stoic philosophy. Unlike many Roman emperors of his time, he resisted the allure of abundant pleasures within his grasp. He refrained from excessive wine consumption and the gruesome spectacles at the Colosseum. Marcus Aurelius was driven by an unwavering desire to fulfill the mission entrusted to him by fortune, a mission centered on serving humanity. Consequently, he held a profound commitment to realizing his purpose. To achieve this, he recognized the vital necessity of diminishing his concern for matters that lacked worthiness or wisdom, and it's crucial to note that such matters were quite abundant. One of the core concepts in Stoicism is the division between things we control and things we do not control, eloquently explained by Epictetus in his teachings. Most, if not all, things beyond our own actions are not within our control. But does this mean we should withdraw from the world? The Stoics believe that we should be realistic about our limited influence over these external matters and that we burden ourselves unnecessarily when we aren't. When life becomes painful, it often signifies that we have invested our emotions in matters beyond our control. In doing so, we inadvertently grant these matters the authority to manipulate and control us, much like puppeteers. Paradoxically, we then blame these puppeteers for pulling our strings, failing to realize that we have willingly given them the power to do so. However, by disengaging our emotional investment in these matters, we strip them of their influence over us, granting ourselves the serenity to remain undisturbed. For Marcus Aurelius, this ability to remain unperturbed by external forces allowed him to cope with the myriad responsibilities and challenges he faced as an emperor. It enabled him to focus on the divine task he believed he had been entrusted with. For Epicurus, this detachment meant freedom. For others, it could be a way to prioritize goals that truly matter or simply a path to a happier, carefree life. When life becomes painful, we must ask ourselves which matters are not worth our emotional investment and, most importantly, how to achieve this emotional detachment. This video is an exploration and a free interpretation of Marcus Aurelius's philosophy on how to care less about things that aren't worth caring about. In his meditations, Marcus Aurelius repeatedly distinguishes between the present, past, and future. In each category, this ancient Roman emperor provides valuable insights into how we often care excessively, in the wrong ways, or about the wrong things. As Seneca eloquently articulated, we often endure more distress within the confines of our imagination than in the actuality of our experiences. This assertion underscores the notion that our thoughts serve as the source of our suffering. When we fixate on the future, our imagination frequently runs wild, conjuring countless scenarios, most of which are unlikely to materialize. In anticipation, we ponder strategies to navigate these potential outcomes, all the while trembling with anxiety due to our uncertainty about how the future will ultimately unfold. In some instances, what happens aligns with our anticipation. However, in many instances, fortune surprises us with events we couldn't have anticipated, often overwhelming us. Consider this scenario, we may have dedicated years to meticulously planning and saving for a well-deserved retirement, only to be confronted just as we approach the threshold of our golden years with a devastating cancer diagnosis that gives us mere months to live. The mere possibility of such events frequently plunges individuals into ceaseless anxiety. The spectrum of potential outcomes ranges from the best-case scenarios to the worst-case scenarios, what if a catastrophic third world war erupts? What if we experience a complete financial loss? These dire consequences are undeniably within the realm of possibility, but as long as they aren't happening in the present, we cannot deal with them, as these events simply aren't happening, at least not yet. They only exist in our thoughts. The future only bothers us because we think about it, it does not exist outside the mind. Marcus Aurelius began each day with a form of self-examination, reflecting on his values, goals, and potential challenges. This habit, known as morning self-assessment, set the foundation for his entire day, fostering self-awareness and self-understanding. You can begin your day with a few moments of self-reflection, considering your values and intentions for the day. 
One of the Stoic practices that Marcus Aurelius advocated for is voluntary discomfort. By embracing discomfort and difficulties, we build resilience and learn to care less about minor annoyances in life. Sometimes, choose discomfort over comfort, this can include taking cold showers, fasting for a day, or walking in the rain. Maintaining a journal is a powerful tool for self-reflection and self-improvement, much like Marcus Aurelius used his personal journal to record his thoughts and insights. You can start your own journal to document reflections on life's challenges and your journey to care less about them. Take time each day to write down your thoughts and experiences, reflecting on how you responded to difficulties and what you learned from life's moments. It's easy to react impulsively to life's pains, but Stoic philosophy teaches us to pause before responding. When something triggers you, take a deep breath, step back mentally, and choose a rational response over an emotional one. Practice the pause and respond technique in daily situations, especially when you feel angry or upset. Stoic philosophy emphasizes the pursuit of virtue as the path to a meaningful life. Marcus Aurelius often challenged himself to embody virtues such as courage, wisdom, and compassion. You can do the same by setting ethical goals for yourself. Choose a virtue to focus on each week or month and actively seek opportunities to practice it. Life's pains come in various forms, from minor annoyances to major disasters. Stoic thinking equips us to face these challenges with patience and composure. Stoic philosophy encourages us to view difficulties as opportunities for growth. When life puts obstacles in your path, see them as stepping stones to becoming a stronger and wiser person. Whenever you encounter failure or challenges, ask yourself, what can I learn from this experience? Marcus Aurelius emphasizes that it is not the burden of the future that weighs us down, but rather our thoughts and reactions to it. But it also holds no power over us in the present. Suffering, Marcus Aurelius wisely notes, arises not from the future itself but from how we handle it in the present moment. It is the weight of the present that truly affects us, as the future is a concept that only exists in our minds until it becomes our present reality. To address excessive concern for the future, Marcus Aurelius offers valuable insights. He advises, never let the future disturb you, you will need it if you have to with the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. This guidance underscores the idea that if we can navigate the present effectively using reason and sound judgment, we can also face the challenges of the future. Instead of getting lost in dreadful scenarios that could happen, he encourages us to focus on the immediate circumstances of the present. By doing so, we come to realize that we can endure the present, and if that's the case, there's no reason to believe we cannot handle what the future holds. This attitude aligns with the concept of Amor Fati, the love of faith, but with the added belief that we possess the capability to overcome whatever challenges may come our way. As for the past, Marcus Aurelius reminds himself of the swiftness with which existence passes and disappears into infinity, beyond our reach. Similar to the future, the past is a realm in which we cannot act. What has passed is gone, and unless we invent a time machine, we cannot change anything about it. He succinctly summarizes, remember that man lives only in the present, in this fleeting moment, all the rest of his life is either past and gone or not yet revealed. Despite the brevity of our lives, which occurs solely in the present, we often become overly preoccupied with matters outside of it, unable to fully embrace the present moment. Marcus Aurelius underscores that the past signifies nothing, and we should remain indifferent to it. This does not mean that events in the past do not affect the present or that we cannot learn from them. However, we must recognize that we cannot alter the past because it is beyond our reach. Our memories of the past are subjective and often distorted, relying on our own perspectives and the perspectives of others. Therefore, the past not only lies beyond our reach but also holds no power over us in the present. Our recollection of the past is indeed likely to be inaccurate, yet we persist in attaching emotions to past events, often reliving them in our thoughts, and thus experiencing the pain they once caused us. Some believe that reflecting on the past may have some impact on it, however, this is a deceptive illusion. The past exists as an irretrievable entity, having slipped out of our grasp. 
All that remains within our view is the possibility of managing our thoughts about something that has long been washed away and will never return. Many people often express sentiments like, I wish I could have handled it differently. However, such desires are based on the unattainable. These thoughts only serve to awaken desires that can never be satisfied and do not bring any useful benefits. Marcus Aurelius, on the other hand, focused on his reactions to past events. We cannot control events in the past, and we can hardly prevent them when they happen in the present. However, we can control how we deal with these events. Initially, the past may be considered unfortunate, we may have had a difficult childhood, experienced the end of a friendship, or faced a business failure. But according to Marcus Aurelius, the nature of these events is not very important. What truly matters is how we handle them. He stated, it is unfortunate that this has happened. No, fortunate that this has happened and I have not been harmed by it, not broken by the present or afraid of the future. This can happen to anyone, but not everyone can remain unharmed by it. Why consider something unfortunate instead of viewing it as fortunate? Can you call something unfortunate when it does not violate the essence of a human being? Or do you think something that does not oppose the will of nature can violate it? Marcus Aurelius invites us to reframe our perspective on past events, emphasizing that it is not the events themselves but our reactions to them that hold the power to shape our well-being and inner peace. This Stoic philosophy encourages us to accept the past as it is, recognizing that our resilience and wisdom are the true measures of our ability to thrive in the face of life's challenges. Do you know what its will is? Has what happened prevented you from acting justly, generously, autonomously, wisely, cautiously, honestly, humbly, clearly, and all the other qualities that allow the nature of a person to be realized? These questions posed by Marcus Aurelius encourage us to reflect on whether past events have truly hindered our ability to manifest virtues such as justice, generosity, autonomy, wisdom, caution, honesty, humility, and clarity. Marcus Aurelius does not entirely dismiss the significance of the past, on the contrary, he recognizes its potential value as a source of learning. He believes that by examining patterns and rhythms in the past, understanding how events tend to ebb and flow and often repeat themselves, we can gain insights that help us predict and prepare for the future. This perspective allows us to draw valuable lessons from the past to inform our understanding of what may lie ahead. However, Marcus Aurelius often emphasizes that the present is our only domain. It is the limited area that we have immediate access to. It serves as an observation point from which we can look into the boundless abyss of the past and the unpredictable darkness of the future. Marcus Aurelius considers the law of nature to be our teacher. If we run away from it or feel sad or angry because of it, we are no different from deserters and fugitives. We must accept the dictates of nature, embrace them, and focus on resolving them instead of wasting our energy feeling disgusted or clinging to our circumstances. In the seventh book of Meditations, Marcus Aurelius conveys a method to embrace the present. He believed that we should focus on what we have rather than obsessing over what we lack. However, he also cautioned against overindulgence in this approach. He advises us to consider how much we would crave the things we possess if we didn't have them. Yet, we should be careful not to derive too much pleasure from them to the point where losing them would make us suffer. Embracing one's circumstances can be a significant challenge, especially in the face of major difficulties or when life hands us a series of setbacks. One may wonder if it's too much to expect respite. However, Marcus Aurelius argued that hardship should not be an excuse for reacting like panicked, suffering animals. Instead, he asserted that such challenges represent an opportunity to practice the fundamental virtue of applying Stoic philosophy to one's life. The essence of life, according to Stoicism, does not revolve around the splendor and fortune of external circumstances, as these factors are inherently unstable, fragile, and beyond our control. What truly matters, in the view of the Stoics, is how we face the situations before us. Marcus Aurelius believed that this should be our primary concern. He said, For me, the present is an opportunity to practice the virtues of wisdom, citizenship, in short, the art that humans share with the gods, 
both consider everything that happens as entirely natural, not as something new or difficult to handle. This perspective invites us to approach life's challenges with equanimity, wisdom, and a sense of duty, regardless of external circumstances. However, Marcus Aurelius remains committed to anchoring himself in the present and focusing on what is within his control, the present moment. Yet, even when we manage to let go of the past and reduce worries about the future, we often find ourselves expending too much concern on matters that lack true meaning. Events happening right before us can make us dissatisfied with the flow of life here and now. When events deviate from our desires, it's common for us to surrender to emotions like anger, sadness, or despair. But according to Marcus Aurelius, being disturbed by what fate brings is futile. The way the world around us unfolds is not our decision, how we react to it is what matters. However, we often become disturbed because we dislike what is happening or because what we desire doesn't occur. Marcus Aurelius says that we should not resist what we are compelled to do. He compares those who struggle against fate to pigs being dragged and squealing when offered for sacrifice. This resistance is futile because we cannot avoid what the gods have ordained. We cannot prevent people from wanting war, stop natural disasters from occurring, or halt our bodies from aging. Similarly, we cannot force the world to conform to our desires. There is no guarantee that those we are attracted to will reciprocate our feelings, and it is not certain that everyone will experience life's opportunities equally. These aspects are unavoidable. However, we often waste a lot of time and energy resisting the unchangeable aspects of reality, the things we cannot alter regardless of the methods we employ. Our emotions fluctuate between anger due to unmet desires and sadness when faced with undesirable circumstances. Thus, the present moment becomes a prison filled with the irregular pleasures of fate. On the contrary, there are times when we are entranced by the present, clinging stubbornly to it and fearing to let go of what we have. Once again, we yield to the irregular pleasures of fate. Amidst the overall chaos in everything around us, ephemeral and uncontrollable, we often cannot see what we truly decide, our choices, actions, and perspectives. Marcus Aurelius believed that difficulties are opportunities for us to train our character. He urged us to see every challenge as a chance to cultivate resilience and resistance. The more challenges we face, the stronger we become. When facing difficulties, consciously remind yourself that this is an opportunity to nurture resilience and mindfulness. Practicing living fully in each moment is a powerful ally that helps us care less about life's obstacles. It allows us to observe our thoughts and emotions without judgment, enabling us to navigate difficult situations more skillfully. Dedicate time each day to practice mindfulness meditation or simply live fully in the present moment in daily activities. While life's obstacles may feel overwhelming at times, this approach empowers us to confront them with greater clarity and composure. Stoicism indeed offers a profound path to inner peace, even amidst chaos. Marcus Aurelius teaches us that it's not the external events themselves but how we interpret and respond to them that causes our suffering. By changing our perspective, we can find peace even in the most challenging circumstances. When facing difficulties, consciously challenge your perspective and ask yourself if there's a constructive way to view the situation. Gratitude is a stoic practice that can bring peace to your life. When we focus on what we have instead of what we lack, we invite a sense of contentment and tranquility. A simple daily practice is to write down three things you're grateful for. This practice can shift your focus from life's hardships to its blessings. Marcus Aurelius reminds us that everything in our lives is temporary. By accepting this reality, we can care less about life's hardships and appreciate the present moment. Meditate on the impermanence of everything remind yourself that challenges, like all experiences, are temporary. Acceptance is a central principle of Stoic philosophy emphasized in meditations. Marcus Aurelius encourages us to accept both the joys and sorrows of life with equanimity, recognizing that resistance only adds to our suffering. Imagine an imaginary fortress of your inner self, envision it as a place of strength and inner peace that protects you from external turmoil. 
This mental image can help you maintain composure in challenging situations. Marcus Aurelius had a deep understanding of the destructive power of anger. He provides practical advice for managing this powerful emotion, urging us to respond with reason and restraint rather than flying into a rage when provoked. When faced with anger, pause and reflect on stoic principles and ask yourself if your reaction aligns with your values. Resilience is an important factor in caring less about life's hardships. It helps us recover from failures and maintain patience in the face of difficulties. Marcus Aurelius provides valuable insights on how to develop this resilience. One fundamental stoic principle is the idea that difficulties are opportunities for growth. Marcus Aurelius encourages us to view challenges as tests of our character and opportunities to become better versions of ourselves. When you encounter difficulties, remind yourself that it's an opportunity for personal growth, asking, how can I emerge from this stronger and wiser? To build resilience, Marcus Aurelius encourages us to willingly seek out challenges and discomfort. By voluntarily imposing difficulties on ourselves, we mentally prepare ourselves to face life's hardships with greater strength. Challenge yourself by stepping out of your comfort zone regularly. This may involve taking on new responsibilities or tackling long-neglected tasks. Many people often express wishes like, I wish I could handle things differently. However, such wishes are based on the unattainable. These thoughts only serve to awaken desires that can never be satisfied and do not bring any useful benefits. Instead of focusing on events in the past, Marcus Aurelius focused on his reactions to events that had occurred. We cannot control past events, and we can hardly prevent them when they happen in the present. Stoicism teaches us to shift our focus to what we can control, our responses and perspectives. Indeed, we can control how we deal with events, including those from the past. Marcus Aurelius emphasizes that the essence of past events is not as important as how we handle them. He encourages us to shift our perspective from labeling events as purely fortunate or unfortunate and instead focus on how these events have shaped our character and actions. For Marcus Aurelius, the past can serve as a valuable source of learning. By examining patterns and rhythms in past experiences, understanding how events tend to ebb and flow and often repeat themselves, we can gain insights that help us predict and prepare for the future. This perspective allows us to draw wisdom from the past to inform our understanding of what may lie ahead. However, Marcus Aurelius often emphasizes that the present is our only field of action. It is the limited area that we have immediate access to and serves as an observation point from which we can look into the unlimited abyss of the past and the unpredictable darkness of the future. Marcus Aurelius inspires us to live with a compassionate heart, recognizing that each of us is an important piece in the grand puzzle of life. He encourages us to seize every opportunity, no matter how small, to perform acts of kindness and help those less fortunate. In the face of conflicts, which are inevitable in human relationships, Stoicism offers a wise approach through rational dialogue and deep empathy. By borrowing the Stoic lens, we can confront challenges with a calm soul, a clear mind, and a willingness to seek common ground. In today's era, Stoicism is experiencing a strong revival, and people from all walks of life are embracing its principles. This philosophy has become an invaluable source of inspiration, helping us navigate the complexities and challenges of life. To deepen your understanding of Stoicism and how it applies to modern challenges, you can explore contemporary Stoic literature, listen to philosophical podcasts, and join like-minded communities. Marcus Aurelius' Meditations is not just a philosophy but a transformative way of life. By reading, reflecting upon, and applying his teachings to your daily life, you can realize that Stoicism is not merely a philosophy but a transformative lifestyle. It offers practical guidance for living a life of wisdom, resilience, and inner peace, regardless of external circumstances. Marcus Aurelius not only espoused Stoic philosophy through his writings but also lived it every day, whether as an emperor or a philosopher. He dedicated time to contemplate, self-examine, and apply Stoic principles to address personal challenges. We too can establish a daily habit of cultivating Stoicism within ourselves. 
Dedicate some time each day to practices like journaling, meditation, or philosophical reflection. In times of adversity, Stoicism shines even brighter, helping us transform our reactions from sorrow to resilience and wisdom. When facing challenges, consciously apply Stoic principles such as acceptance, distinguishing what is controllable, and ethical reasoning. Marcus Aurelius serves as an example of ethical leadership. As an emperor, he prioritized justice, knowledge, courage, and patience in his decisions. We can also lead a moral life, whether in a leadership position or in personal interactions. Continuously evaluate your actions and decisions based on Stoic virtues, striving to act with integrity, fairness, and humility. The resilience taught by Marcus Aurelius is not a short-term response to difficulties but a lifelong practice. Stoic philosophy encourages us to apply a long-term perspective to life's ups and downs. By recognizing that challenges are part of a larger journey, we can be less concerned with temporary obstacles. When facing difficulties, remind yourself of the broader context of your life's journey and the development opportunities that difficulties bring. Stoic philosophy is not a solitary endeavor. Marcus Aurelius had mentors and fellow travelers, and we can benefit from a supportive community. Seek out Stoic communities, whether online or in person, where you can exchange ideas, receive support, and reinforce your commitment to Stoic principles. As you continue to apply Stoic principles, remember that patience is not just about enduring suffering but also about adapting and growing when faced with life's challenges. Embrace change as an opportunity for growth. The legacy of Marcus Aurelius lives on not only through his writings but also through the countless lives he touched. His insights continue to inspire and guide individuals toward a Stoic way of life. In the spirit of Marcus Aurelius, we conclude the journey of learning about Stoic philosophy. His eternal lessons invite us to embrace the impermanence of life, practice acceptance, develop spiritual strength, and overcome temporary challenges. As you continue your Stoic journey, may you discover eternal peace, boundless wisdom, and profound serenity. Remember that Stoicism is not just an admiration but a way of life. It promises a rich life with unwavering patience, unerring ethics, and endless happiness. In the words of Marcus Aurelius, do not waste time arguing about what a good person should be, be one. Let his wisdom illuminate your path as you strive to become the best version of yourself, caring less about life's wounds and instead finding completeness in self-discovery and personal growth. That's all for today. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked our video, please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing this video with others. If you've watched until the end, leave a comment saying, stay strong, so I know you did. I will read all the comments. Thank you for your attention.